Welcome to another edition of Talking Sample. Great to have your company this week. I'm joined by a very special guest, Narelle Smith, of course, the coach uh, at the Sample W side, the Eagles. Narelle, welcome. Thanks for having me, Hazy. Before we get into it, we review the women's finals and, of course, uh, what's happening in the league. Um, let's talk about your journey because um, your CV is stacked now, whether it's in the AFLW, um, your current position in the Sample W. And I suppose we could even call you a trailblazer. Can we call you that? Oh, you? yeah, it's been thrown around a fair bit. So You've heard yeah, that word let's lots go of times before. Yeah, you have. Of course, coached uh, the Glenelg Reserves in the men's art competition. Um, what a journey it's been, and it's still going. How's it, how's it all been going for you? Yeah, oh, look, you know, I think um, when footy's in your blood and, you know, you, you just love it, it, you just find what opportunities present themselves and go with that. And I've tended to do that, like, throughout my whole coaching career. And... Uh, you know, ended up at the Eagles, which has been a fantastic year. What's the next step, I suppose, in progression? Because you've, I mean, you, you're ticking off every box. What's, what's, yeah. the, what's the, I won't say end goal, because you're yeah. doing some great things in the Sample W, but yeah. I mean, for your development as a coach, what's the next step? Yeah, look, I I've, I've definitely have aspirations to hopefully maybe pick up an AFLW head coach role, but, you know, that hasn't happened yet or hasn't come to fruition. So just got to work with what you presented and um, you know in my role at Sample W it's uh, getting those uh, girls ready for the next step because obviously I've been in an AFLW program, I uh, worked closely with Doc Clark which was uh, a great experience and you know brought a fair bit to that program myself because of my background working at Sample and um, even at Adelaide Footy League yep. um, you know all the work that I did there previously uh, building up women's programs when no one was really that interested in it and, yeah. uh, you know, like it's just skyrocketed. So, yeah, I've got a fair CV and we'll just see what happens. Can I ask as well, how much do you have to adjust the way that you coach between the boys and the girls? Um, it's not all that much, I, I don't think, and uh, especially I think the um, behaviour and gender, that gap is closing all the time, um, you know, with the, the way that society is moving. Um, you know, so for, you know, men have their own... Uh, gender struggles, as do women, yep. um, and you know it's just all about treating humans like humans and working through trying to find the best about them and teach them footy on the way. Am I right in saying that uh, the boys were not the greatest communicators? So if, if um, there is a strength for the yeah. girls, they may be able to express themselves a little bit better. Or yeah. Is that just me? <laughs> oh look, I, I don't know. I, I think. Uh, in the Eagles programs, like I have a lot of young girls and I think they struggle to communicate yeah. as well. Um, and a lot of that is linked with confidence. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that's a bit of a myth, to be honest. I think if you're a good communicator, gender doesn't really come into it. It's just me then. Maybe. <laughs> are, are you quiet or? <laughs> no, I sometimes struggle with what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before we talk about uh, the league for you, let's uh, have a bit of a quick recap of the reserves. Um, so what we can tell you as well that um, with the reserves, the Bloods continuing their strong season as well. So the league side really battling, but uh, a solid win over the Eagles on the weekend. Um, Panthers got the job done against the Red Legs, so the Panthers are very much back. Um, for the Roosters, uh, they had a nice day as well. Reserves did the job against Glenelg uh, and Sturt are doing, uh, they went down to the uh, Bulldogs actually. So we'll talk about the league a little bit later on. Really tough season so far mm. for the Bulldogs. Mm. They had a, a massive loss, but um, let's get into round six, and we'll start with the Bloods who hosted the Crows. Big loss for the Bloods again. They're in probably that same sort of phase as the Bulldogs, where we know it's going to be tough for the Crows. Matt Crouch at sample level. Yeah, I would think exactly what he was asked to do. Oh, absolutely. 36 in uh, sample footy is uh, big numbers, isn't it? And, uh, you know, I mean, we all know that there, there'll be something behind that. They would have wanted something from him as a player yeah. to drop him back to the sample when he's clearly delivered. So he'll be knocking on the door, no doubt, of AFL. I suppose the big question is, is he one and done? Is he straight back in there, particularly after the Crows have had a, a big yeah. loss on the weekend at AFL level? But like you said, 36 disposals, 10 clearances. Mm -hmm. um, Jake Saligo was really, really good as well, 29. Touches Darcy Fogarty two goals and the other one I suppose is Wayne Miller where he's mm. at. It's probably been mm. a, a longer stint in the sample than we would have expected, but mm -hmm. 15 touches and he's building. Yeah, uh, look when the side that you know the number one side loses like it did on the weekend, there, there's always opportunity for these players to put. 
put their hand up and say, well, get me back in coach. So, um, yeah, the, I think um, as coaches, we always talk about the last two to three positions when your um, selection committee is are the hardest yep. because, you know, there'll be players that just automatically, they're magnets on the board. So you'd have to think that these boys will be knocking on the door to get back in. He's just so classy. He's Wayne Miller. He's just uh, one of those yep. natural players that's just got this freakish ability. So as soon as he gets back on the AFL, the better it is, particularly for the fans. Um, next game was a really important game for both sides. So South Adelaide taking on the Red Legs at Norwood in just, at times, the worst conditions imagine yeah. You almost couldn't see via the live stream. It was raining that hard. But to the Panthers' credit, uh, the Red Legs, it seemed like they were in charge for the majority of the game. And mm -hmm. the Panthers came up trumps at the most important time. Yeah, the, uh, oh gee, the Panthers have uh, lost some close ones already this yeah. year. So um, I think Jared and the boys will be very happy that they got that one done. And I think everyone loves to win it at Coopers against oh, Norwood. That's because, because you get an absolute like, Yeah, you do. You're a visitor. Yeah, you know, like the way that, that um, stadium's set up, they're, they're so close to you and you can hear every word that comes from the passionate le red leg supporters. So I think they'll be, uh, Jared will be super stoked about that win. And I suppose uh, they're in touch now with the ladder and all of a sudden, I won't say it's season saving, but it's really, really important that they won that game. Mentally. Yep. To, to go, yeah, we can still like, you know, uh, play with the stronger sides, and yeah, I think um, they like Broadbent's the key for me with yep. that side. Like when when he's up and firing, you see he's he's had twenty four off that half back, and he just he just sets everything up for them yep. to actually hold it in their front half and score. So uh, next game, of course, the Eagles travelled to Alberton, um, and they went in as, as heavy favourites. There's no mm. question about that. Got mm. the job done. Um, for Woodville West Tynes, our boy Daniel Menzel continued uh, his nice little average of four goals, so he's up around the pointy end of the Kent Farm medal. Really tough to contain Menzel. Um, for Port Adelaide, I mean, the big talking point was Charlie Dixon. Mm -hmm. He's a mountain. 75% gain time and, and 10 disposals. Yeah. So it was good to see him back at Sanford level. And what I did like about it is he still shows that passion. He kicked the goal. Fist in the air, all those types of things. So you love seeing big boys like that with high profiles yep. really embrace local footy. Oh, they've certainly missed him uh, up in the ones, but it was, you know, really good to hear that he got through. Um, and, you know, Eagles sent their best defender. I think Lehman might have had a little twinge at the, at the at his string or something late in the game. Um, so, you know, they would have just wanted to get him through. Yep. And, you know, he, uh, he did that. But uh, I, I think it's nice to see Clark. Yeah. Um, up in the top possession getters, you know, he's yep. obviously ex-AFL, classy young man and uh, really good for uh, our boys to get across the line. There's so many stars playing for the Eagles. Mm. I don't think we're talking about Joey Sine on it. Oh. He is a gun. This is a bloke he's who's a won a couple of best and fairest now. Yeah. He's won a couple of premierships. Um, and I don't think we talk about him enough because he's one of those guys who, at the end of it, you look back and go, geez, how good is Joey Sine on? Mm -hmm. He's, he's a Mr. Fixer, isn't he? Yeah. You know, like, there, there's issues in the back half. You chuck in there to get a bit of run off the half back. and But, you know, throw him in the mid and he'll get a critical clearance. I know when we watched, like, we were preparing to play against Glenelg a couple of weeks ago. and So I was poking my head out, you know, watching what was happening. And when, when the game was on the line, he won this critical clearance through the middle. Yep. And, um, you know, he, he's just unbelievable. That Can kick a clutch goal too. That's the best way to describe him, Mr. Yep. Fixer. Yep. Mr. Reliable. Yep. That's some very good things. Um, next game was a really important game, 100 years of footy at Prospect Oval um, mm -hmm. and the Roosters delivered in a nail by a two point winners <laughs> over the Bays. Jeez, mm. Harrison Wick found it. Wick, gee whiz. <laughs> 45 <laughs> touches. It's insane. It's just ridiculous. Yep. Their midfield though is absolutely stacked. Yeah, I, I think they're both great midfields um, and a two point game would suggest that, you know, that it was pretty tight. I actually uh, commented, did some special comments for the, the women's game and I was uh, walking in uh, a bit late and uh, gee, the, the North supporters were up and about. <laughs> they were happy, yeah. they were happy. 100 game, uh, 100 year game and, you know, I think they always like to beat the Bays. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Uh, there's a bit of that going at the moment mm -hmm. with the Bays, which is a credit to how well they've been going. Mm -hmm. more successful you are, the more people that want to knock you off. Yeah. Um, good to see as well a couple of big boys at either end kicking goals. So McBean with 5-1 end, Ram the other with 5. So that's... 
Yeah. That's, it feels like good old fashioned footy. It does, yeah. The big the big men fighting it out at the either end of the ground. Hugh Stagg's a great story yep. though too. Like, you know, he's obviously just um, coming into the ones and playing this year and to kick four against like in a really competitive game is, is fantastic for him. He just looks like he's ready to take that next step and just be a, a big strong oh he's not very tall but he's he's so strong around the contest. I just love watching him play. I know there was a lot of talk last year in the under 18s because mm. he did some really good things yeah. with potentially a rookie of a spot and things like that. Do you think yeah. he could take that next step eventually? Yeah I do. Yeah I think he's I, I think he's definitely you know, uh, one of those guys that he might get drafted a little bit later in life once he, uh, you know, cements himself in a really strong base side. And but yeah, no, they'd definitely be having a look at him for sure. Um, last game of the round was Sturt hosting Centrals. This was always going to be tough for the Dogs, mm. and I don't like sitting up here and saying, "Oh, Centrals got smashed," but they did, unfortunately. Yeah, mm. ninety-eight point um, hiding. It's never fun to play it, only no matter who you are. Yeah. But gee, Sturt's up and about at the moment. Oh, hasn't Maddie got them swimming? Gee whiz, um, they they just look like a steam train at the moment. Oh, you know, just on centrals, uh, you just get the feeling that they've got a um, the older boys like, and and their names will tell you on the stat sheet in the Schillers and Presbury's and the, yep. the like. But just in the middle, yep. they're just kind of missing that that player that just can get it done in um, you know in the the middle age and the middle part. They've got a lot of kids coming through, yep. and so yep. you'd have to say that they're in a rebuild. For it, sure, it's it's absolutely a rebuild, and I think every team, every team's top end talent mm. is really elite. Mm -hmm. Central's included, because like you mentioned, the Schillers, Hoskin, mm -hmm. etc., Harbour when he's up and about, it's probably the guys who was selected maybe sixteen to twenty two yep. are always going to be the difference, and that's probably where we'll say that they're developing at the moment. Yeah, and Tomo's Tomo's the man to get that done. So you know he'll um, he'll pick out some talent around. You know whether it's um, some rural talent that he brings in, some older bodies, because yep. I feel like that he he's, you still need that real uh, middle of your list type of player that's yep. really strong. Because this is such a contested style of footy sample, yep. but no, it's, um, he'll he'll be like he just needs a little bit of time. Just a bit more time, hopefully. Yeah. My dogs can get back on track. Yeah. Um, we will say as well, of course, uh, each and every episode is brought to us by iPerform Sports Injury Clinic. Uh, the good folks down there in particular, Brad Bain, make sure you go down there. He will sort you out. Um, let's have a look at the ladder. And right now, it is very, very tight. It's a, I mean, anyone inside the top five, top six, maybe, could mm -hmm. genuinely have a crack at this thing. It's changing each and every week. Uh, Glenn have owned it for the first month or so, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they lost and they fell to fourth. Now Sturt's on top, purely three percentage. So um, yeah. Sturt, Adelaide and North Adelaide at the top, top three, five wins with one loss. Um, if I was a punter, I would have no idea where to put my money at the minute. That's exactly how it should be. That means, <laughs> it's, that means it's a strong competition and anyone can just jump up and around. But I think the surprise back of me is Adelaide. I mean, it, well, it's no surprise if you know Godsey. Yep. Um, you know, that he'll leave no stone unturned. But I, I think, you know, from previous years when they've just always been a um, bit of cellar dweller action going on for them, that they're just unbelievable sitting in second. I'll ask you this question as well, mm -hmm. Rel. There's, I think this has been the question for, for the entirety of uh, Adelaide's involvement in the sample competition. Mm -hmm. Someone like Mick Gordon's in charge. Mm -hmm. Is he playing to win or is he playing to develop? Or is he beautifully mixing both? Oh, that is a great question. Without notice, too. No, no, I, I, no, I like it. I love it. Like, got to think on your feet in these roles. <laughs> have to, have to. It's like being like, you know, uh, yeah. if you've got trouble in the middle, you have to do something. Yep. Um, I think he's got a beautiful balance of that. Um, yep. I think, I think if you know uh, Godden or you know people that talk to you about Godden, that they will say that he is so competitive. Yep. And he will be ruthless in the way that he wants to win. Um, but there's no doubt that when you've got the AFL sample lists like uh, Matty Locken has and Godsey, you have to find that balance yep. and of them wanting to play at that level, but also um, wanting to be developed and putting their hand up to play AFL. So I think he's doing it beautifully. I think that um, you know that's a reflection of uh, the Adelaide men's program yep. um, that they understand they're in the, for the long haul, trying to make AFL footballers, and so you have to be strong and sample. Very nice. That's you just thinking on your feet. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Not too bad at all. <laughs> um, all right. So that is the top five and the ladder. Um, time now for everybody's absolute favourite segment, and that is men's in the bucket. 
Yes, hello and welcome to another edition of The Bunker. We have our second edition of Power Rankings. So again, we, we looked at the ladder, Hazy and Narelle talked about that. I'm gonna go through and have a look and see which teams are actually going better than maybe what they show on the ladder and which teams are struggling a little bit more. So let's jump into our Power Rankings and start at number 10. Yes, and at number 10, West Adelaide, uh, obviously have started the year 0 and 6, no wins as of yet, struggling at the moment, both ends of the ground, they're number 10 in offense and number 10 in defense. The, the thing that is really costly at the moment is they're getting blown out in single quarters in games, it's absolutely causing them to be blown out of games, they've had 6, 6, 4, 7, 6 and 8 goals kicked against them by opposition teams in quarters this year, week on week. So that's why we've got West Adelaide in that position. Central Districts comes in at number nine. They are one and five. They, it's probably, it's a clear bottom two at the moment for mine between West Adelaide and Centrals. Uh, they showed on the weekend that they're battling, need a bit of a change. They're a long way off. They lost by 98 points to stir on the weekend. As a result, that has them second last in defense and they are number eight in offense and that's why they come in at number nine. Port Adelaide is our number eight team and they are with a one and five record. Their last two weeks have been extremely impressive though. They beat Glenelg two weeks ago and got within five goals of the Eagles on the weekend. So we do know that with a healthier AFL list, which is starting to happen for them, they're gonna be a much better team and they're gonna be thereabouts as the season progresses. And they're a team that no matter who you're playing against, that you know that they're gonna be a tough opposition and they can beat anyone on their day. Norwood uh, at number seven, two and four they are on the season. Jade Rollins will be really flat with that record because they've been in a lot of games, they just haven't been able to get it done. They've got a lot of inconsistency at the moment and I guess that comes about from their youth as well. And, they are number three in defense. They are a very good defensive team, but they're just struggling to kick scores at the moment and, and they're just not quite winning the games that they would like to get over the line in. South Adelaide with a three and three record is our number six team. They have been within three goals in every single game they've played this year. All six games have been within three goals. So I guess they could be 0 and six or they could be six and 0. And it probably reflects their season quite well. They're very patchy this year as of uh, six rounds into the seasons, while they are number six in my power rankings. The Eagles with a four and two record come in at number five. Defensively, they've tightened up really well. They're the number two defensive team in the competition. There's just a lot of uh, players out at the moment with injuries that's hurting them. Uh, but I guess looking at this top five, you could throw a blanket over the top five and I think you could, all of these teams are interchangeable in the positions that they are. And, the Eagles come in at number five. Glenelg at number four with a four and two record. The last two games they have had a three and a two point loss. So they easily could be six and oh, but I think if you ask them, you spoke with their players and their coach, they'd say that they're a little bit scratchy at the moment. Their form's not quite there. They are, they were previously our number one team in the power rankings. So they have slid a little, little bit in the rankings, but like I said, you could throw a blanket over these top five and they are our number four team. The Adelaide Crows with a five and one record is the reason why I put them at number three. They previously were number two. Uh, they are the number one offensive ranked team in the comp and they're an offensive powerhouse at the moment. They're averaging 106 points a game for, but as we did touch on with Port Adelaide, they're very dependent on their AFL list and their AFL players and injuries are starting to kick in and probably just starting to bring them back to the pack a little bit more. North Adelaide comes in as our number two ranked team. Previously, they were six, so they really have ascended up the rankings. That is due to they are the number two offensive ranked team in the comp. They're coming at number four in defense. They have a five and one record, so Jacob Surgeon will be extremely impressed with how they've started the year. But not just that, they've had big wins over Glenelg and over the Eagles, the two grand finals from last season. And they are, they're kicking a score with many avenues to go, and that's probably the thing that they've added to their forward line, which is making them much more lethal this year. And there you have it, Sturt is our number one team in the power rankings. Previously, they were ranked at three. They have a five and one record. 
They are number three in offense, but this is the big thing for mine. They are number one in defense. They average 56 points against a game, which shows that they are very stingy in defense. They're really, uh, really good team at defending as a team. And the other point why I've probably got them just ahead of the other four teams that I mentioned in the top five is they've had dominant wins this season. They won by 98 points, by 28 points, by 43 points. They've really dominated games, which other teams probably haven't done throughout the first six rounds of this season. So it's why Sturdy is currently the number one team in the power rankings. Another outstanding addition of Menz's bunker. Um, very good point Menz made as well that well, maybe a little bit surprising Sturt as the number one mm. side between and then two to five Makes a lot of sense, North Adelaide, Glenelg and the Eagles. Anyone can sort of jostle for that spot, but um, agree, Sturt, outright number one? Yes, I'm going to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it's a hard end. call. It's a hard call, but oh, yeah. It's hard, no, like we said, yeah. it'd be hard. If you had yeah. to put money on someone right now, it's yeah. really, really hard. But I suppose yeah. the good point that men's made was that they've been able to really dominate games. Yeah, and the, the momentum that they're, they're running with is just insane. Mm. Yeah. Um, all right, let's uh, move on and let's have a look at the uh, Sample W ladder. So, uh, well, this isn't going to um, sit too well with you right now. Mm -hmm. but it's fine. Woodville West Torrens didn't quite make the finals. Can you take us through this season? I suppose highs and lows. Yeah, uh, I think um, having a really good win on Saturday was a nice way for us to finish and um, it really solidified in our minds that we're trending in the right why, you know, we had a dominant game against Westies who've had a really hard season, um, yep. a lot harder than us. And we in, in our last month of footy, we've had, um, you know, margins of two, four, six, and that's against, uh, you know, we lost to North by four, uh, Glenelg by two. So they're both, you know, really strong contenders for the flag. So we think we're about the mark and, um, you know, you turn those around and then it's a, easily to say it's a successful season. and. Um, you know, our percentage is higher than Central's and Norwood. So, you know, we, we feel like um, we're going in the right way. And it was uh, basically a total rebuild from when yeah. I took over, just um, putting in some um, really solid team systems and how we want to play. And we feel like that we've had a successful season, even though the ledger do probably doesn't look that way. All right, this is how the Sample W's finals will play out. So the first semi-final will be North Adelaide taking on Sturt. Um, second semi-final, Glenelg taking on South Adelaide. We're going to preview those games a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. um, the growth of Sample W, firstly, mm -hmm. in your eyes, uh, from the outside looking in, it mm -hmm. looks like it's made some really solid strides. Oh, the, the pace of the game is probably the first thing that you go like. It, it's just such a faster game. The skills are up. Um, and you know the the way the girls are playing uh you know say for example we played uh, west on the weekend and it was wet and greasy ball and they handled the ball beautifully uh, you know um i can talk from our perspective like we had 80 percent handball use in the wet so um yep. you know that that's pretty good efficient handball rate for um any comp i would yep. say so you know um i think uh it, it's just about now just building that spectator base and just uh, you know, getting some people interested in actually watching it more regularly. Yep. Mm. Um, we'll talk about the next level as well, of course, the AFLW, because they will embarrass you, but at some stage, well, there's no doubt that you will be an AFLW senior coach <laughs> um, if you choose to go down that path. Mm. Um, the season times, the changing of the season times, I think yeah. it's going to be late August. Mm. It's a good move. Oh, look, I, you know, they'll have their reasonings and, you know, it'll be a strategic reason why they are shifting um, the season. And we're basically just on ice at the moment, just kind of waiting. We'll, yep. We have to wait to see what that actually looks like. And then obviously the sample and the decision makers there will work through what that looks like for us. So um, we'll just go about business as usual and prepare for a November um, pre-season start time for us. And, yep. um, and then we'll just see where the cars fall. There's not a lot you can do about it at the moment. Um, Port Adelaide coming into the competition. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah, look, um, apparently the draft's mid-June. Yep. So it, you just don't know what they're going to be looking for and what their list field looks like. So uh, we'll just wait and um, take it on the chin, hopefully. You know, you want, you want to be a sausage factory building AFLW players. Yep. No different to yep. um, what Sheeds does in the men's yep. and all the other coaches. You have to be proud that you're building good footballers to go to the next level because at the end of the day, everything is about the players. 
Yep. And we want them to do, be the best version of themselves, so that's a successful thing too. Are you expecting a few Eagles girls to get an opportunity? I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think we'll lose some to the draft, and um, yeah. you know, and we'll um, have open arms for them if and when they want to come back to us, and and that's what I think. Uh, I think is a successful club is, you know, when you when you play as men or women doesn't matter, they go to the next level as soon as they come out of that system. At some point, the, the first thing they want to do is come back to their home. And I know you touched on it, but just a word on the development of girls' footy through the junior ranks up until the senior ranks. I mean, it's we're starting to see the girls coming through from much younger who are playing the AFLW mm. now. Hence, the standard is really, really good. But yeah. it seems like more and more girls at a really young age are picking up the footy. Yeah, that's how it should be. Yeah. You know, that, it's it's always befuddled me about why it's never been that way, but thank God it is. Yep. yep. Outstanding. All right, stick around. Coming up, we're going to preview this weekend's Sample W's finals matches and also the big state game, South Australia taking on WA over in Perth. All right, welcome back to Talking Sample. Quick thank you as well, of course, to the sponsors, iPerform Sports Injury Clinic, Brad Bain and the guys down there do exceptional work. Um, let's jump into a bit of a preview for the Sample W finals, which gets underway this weekend. Um, well, first game, we've got North Adelaide taking on Sturt. Mm -hmm. Who do you like? and who is probably expected to do some big things? Well, you'd have to go with North. Um, I think they've got a lot more leg speed than Sturt. But if we, if we go back to the minor round when they played, uh, Sturt were able to bring the pressure around the footy and didn't allow them to get the ball outside and get any run going at all. And they held them to seven points. They didn't even score a goal. Yep. So, and Sturt got a late goal to win the match. And, um, so it, it just depends. If Sturt can stop their run, uh, they'll be a chance. But North Adelaide, for me, are uh, um, probably, I think they're the, the flag favourites at the moment. Even though they went down to Glenelg in a close one last night. But I still think that in big games, um, they just know how to play. Nice, okay. So first semi-final, you tip North mm -hmm. over Sturt. Mm -hmm. Second semi-final, Glenelg taking on South Adelaide. Mm -hmm. Who do you like? I like the Bays. Yep. Um, they were excellent last night. Um, had a really big... Uh, fourth quarter. Uh, they've just played each other um, last last week or a couple of rounds ago um, and Glenelg got over the line by one point. So it's going to be tight and South are a little bit unpredictable. Like, so, yep. you know, they, they have probably haven't had as most consistent year as the Bays, but um, it could go either way, but I'm just going to stick with the Bays. There you go. Okay, so North and the Bays. Um, now, the state game is on this weekend, SA taking on WA. We will say as well that uh, we're not going to go into matchups teams and all those types of things, because as we're filming right now, teams haven't quite been selected. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't dare talk about someone who eventually doesn't get in the mix. Yes. But what we do know is that the players love this. They take it really, really seriously. Um, it's good to see state footy as well, well and truly mm. alive, because mm. it's, 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 it's clearly embraced. Oh, it's, a, it's a great, it, I, I don't know why we would ever not play state footy. Absolutely. Because, you know, like if you talk about football rivalries like WA, the Sandgropers v Victoria, SA, it's just, oh, it's kind of like that middle spine of the country. Like it's just fantastic to watch. And, and it, it's kind of like they play with a lot more freedom because yep. they'll have a little bit of structure, but basically it's talent v talent. Yep. Yeah. On top of that as well, for the younger guys, Absolutely, mm. the AFL clubs are watching. Absolutely, they are. We've heard so many stories, and particularly with the mid-season draft of guys. I mean, I remember a few years ago, John Noble played really, really well. I reckon over in WA, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, well, hasn't he just uh, found his little spot in the AFL for Collingwood? So, um, good, fun games to watch. It's going to be on Sunday before the West Coast and Melbourne match, and SA is ahead by one, so they can't square the ledger. No, we can't. Is it? Come on, Sheets. Get, get it <laughs> done, on, mate. Sheets. I'm talking to you. Straight yeah. to you. Um, Rel, thank you so much for joining us, um, giving us such a good insight, not just to, to uh, the Sample W, but women's footy in general. Um, it's clearly going in a good direction, and hopefully next season uh, the Eagles can jump just a little bit higher up the ladder. Yeah, we've got a bit of work to do in the off-season, but we'll be right. <laughs> thanks for having me, Hazy. All right, thanks so much for jumping in and having a look this weekend. We're going to be back this time next week. But if you can as well, make sure you get out uh, and support the Sample W girls. Plenty of local footy this weekend.